Welcome to the Kendi and Rabo podcast, sponsored by Anderson's Grill and Bar and Maeve's Bar Sligo. Hold on a second now. Sean O'Reilly's locked out of the house. What? I can I can tell. I'm looking at the text coming in here. Are you at home, son? No, okay, so do you know what? We'll do a test. <laughs> Where's Laura? What time are you back? We'll do a test here now because I'd say six to eight times I've had to let him into that house. Yeah. I have a key for your... So you say, no, I'm not around. And no, he'll I've, ring my phone. I've told him I'm, I'm podcasting. Beck it anyway. I was yeah. hoping that he... Because he is um, an absolute disaster with the keys. Yeah, like, yeah. What does be wrong with him at all? Yeah, he'd have to call over and say hello to us. Did I ever tell you the yeah. time I saw... I saw um, a person and they had both of their car keys on the same ring, you know. Yeah. And I said, "Why have you got two car keys?" He said, "In case I lose one." I said, "But if you lose one, you lose both of them because they're both on the same shagget." Was that you? No. Was it Sean? It no. probably was Sean. Could I have bet been. You. Yeah. Turns out he didn't lose a key. Oh, he <laughs> turns out he actually had it this time. Didn't he, he had the keys. Just wondering was he in the house? Turns out it was. Uh, oh, he just misses you. No, oh. wouldn't say it's missing me either. Why? What does he want? That'll do now. No, what does he want? <laughs> We'll move on there now. Oh, shit, shit. No, cut that out. Sorry, cut that out. Cut that out. Cut that out. How do we come out of that? We're back, folks. How are we going? Any old crack with Chino? We start that episode. I again. can't believe the whole thing just glitched there. I can't yeah. believe that. That's, oh, that's lethal. What 213, we... folks. Yeah, 213. Uh, we were having chats downstairs and we said, no, no, let's actually record this because I, I was turning red the more you were talking to me. But what? You were talking about, so Ray, um, the countryman uh, himself from Kalala in Mayo, yeah. right? Born and bred on spud and cabbage and decided I'm going to get married in the fanciest place in Ireland. It's not, it's just got a fancy garden. Yeah, well it doesn't because, well that garden is being used up man. Yeah. Because they're trying to shove salad down our throat and everything. I'm like a bull raid downstairs. Do you want me to run the, I've been doing this to people, it's the wedding feast uh, rapid fire buzz around. I, I, I mean... I, you only let me know one or two little bits. Yeah, well, this here, is your menu. Go. This is your menu. And so, yeah, so we've we've menu got, and there's a whole heap of stuff on it. Yeah. And we have to pick. Now, I'm not going to give you everything. So what's Because the soup? there's loads of stuff, right? So we're going to start off, there's a starter, right? Uh, okay. And there's, there's a mandatory starter, and it's some sort of a, a toasted cauliflower. That's sick. Right? And and as Nicholas said downstairs, can you? why do you have to go for the cauliflower? I said it's probably because the gentleman that runs the company that does the food probably has a big fondness for the cauliflower he has a surplus and he knows that people are not going to pick cauliflower so what he's done is he's elevated the cauliflower to a mandatory starter yeah yeah because no one wants it and then he's given you the option here's your rapid fire buzz around of a fancy salmon starter right with with something with beetroot or do you want some sort of an Italian salad with mozzarella and tomato and um, and and prosciutto ham Where's the soup? <laughs> no, no soup, but you're, there's always a starter. You're you're looking at a volavant section here now is what oh, we're talking wh- about. Where's the volavant? So it's either volavant or a goat's cheese parcel in your regular, this is, in your regular wedding speak. Are you telling me there's no volavant? There's no volavant and there's no goat's cheese parcel. So what you've got instead is a gravel axe salmon. I don't know why to call it a gravel axe. Or you go for um, an heirloom tomato with a mozzarella cheese and a bit of prosciutto ham. So you which might, of those two do you want? <laughs> you might as well have said to me, come here, who would you want to ride, Nicola, me or Brendan? <laughs> <laughs> so you, what? I don't want either of those things. Right. You can't. That's not an option. So you'd probably go for the cauliflower, so I'd say which I is might the go mandatory. For, I'd probably go for the wine at that stage, man. But me and Laura have to pick one of those dishes. So what do, would you go? I did. I was thinking maybe not chance the salmon because is, not everybody likes the salmon. This is like Sophie's choice, man. This is like Kendi's <laughs> choice. <laughs> right. We'll move on to the the main. I'm not picking either. Though. You know, if I had to eat the salmon, <laughs> yeah. right? I well, first of all, I won't eat the salmon. That helps. What's the so, other thing? A tomato. It's a kind of a tomato and cheese and and ham salad. No. That's Italian. It's nice. Yeah. Fuck the Italians. <laughs> right. Okay. Straight in with that now. Right. So we'll go on to the mains. So we kind of. So there's no soup. There's no soup. I thought you said that that was the Valavon section. That's the Valavon, but there is no soup section. It's right. been removed from the menu for the purposes of me not feeling like a prisoner in my own clothes on the day of my wedding. I hope you're ready, Ray, for what for is a coming. revolution. Yeah, <laughs> the amount of people. I say it once, I say it again. Where where's the soup, Ray? Yeah, there's no drop of soup. There's no soup at all in the menu. That is a thunder and so disgrace. Kicks, people will be starving. We kick straight. Is there a soup the max there, by? No, there's a soup. Max. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll kick straight into the main courses here now. We have three options. Now, one of them is a vegan, vegetarian option. We're not going to really talk about that one. Sick. There's none of them advice it. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. That's right. So we have to pick two kind of meat dishes, right? And by meat, I mean either beef, yeah. chicken, or fish. Brilliant. First of all, chicken. Yes. Apparently, chicken is frowned upon at weddings, even though I love chicken. But chicken is brilliant. We, we used to apparently, roll... it's not fancy enough that you can get... But, 
but chicken anywhere. Yeah, but yeah, but what's the what's the point? Because there's a reason we get chicken anywhere because it's, it's lovely. lovely yeah. It's lovely. So these fucking pretentious <laughs> bastards. <laughs> so these I'm pretentious gonna... people at weddings, like. I remember one time <laughs> I was at a wedding with me mother and we got a lump of a beef, right? I was yeah. going, this is brilliant. Now, it came out, man. I swear to God, I think the cow is still alive out the back. <laughs> well, that brings me on to the beef section. Yeah, but if they come out with a beef, right, and it's red raw running with dripping with blood. So, I'll... You can go beef or sirloin steak. Give me so steak. Which, which, you want to go the steak? Yeah, give me steak. The problem with the steak is, though, you're opening yourself up to criticism because everybody likes it a different way. There's a steak three ways, yeah. right? What's your but steak it's three not way? even steak three ways. <laughs> It's What's either steak get it, three way again, you can right? get it rare, you can get it medium rare, you can get it medium, yeah. you can get it uh, <laughs> medium, medium well. well and and well and well. Well. <laughs> well. <laughs> so there's six different types of steak. So they won't do that though. They'll throw it out to you raw the bastards. They'll throw it out That's to you somewhere in the do. middle. No, because chefs chefs yeah. again are pretentious bastards. Yeah. All of them, Ray. Across yeah. the board, they're all a shower bath. They'll want to do it raw because they're like, Oh, this is how we this is how it's supposed to be done. Yeah. No, no. But I'm gonna get give me a medium steak. Yeah, give me a medium steak. There'll be some people that want blood dripping off it and they'll be upset if they No, but if they won't get... eat it. They're pretentious <laughs> bastards. They're pretentious bastards, right? Oh, so you're eat safe for going with a beef. Yeah. Rather than going with the steak, you're safe for going with the beef. Okay. So if we have the beef, right, yeah. now we need something to go with it. Counteract the beef. So we either want a fish or a fowl. Right? Right. And the fish for us would be a head. I thought hake. you were going to say a foal there, like no, a horse. No, no, there's no horse in the menu, sadly. Yeah. Jesus. Pretentious and all as it is. <laughs> so, yeah, so bring you the, what would you go? Would you go a chicken or a hake? Oh, it's, not, it's a hake of shite now, if you ask me. I wouldn't go eating that. Is it hake? Hake, I was going. The for. only fish I lace. Don't we already talked about Sandman. If yeah. it was a battered cod, I'd ace it, man. I would love it all. So you want a fish beans. and chip? Oh, I'd love a fish and chip, right? <laughs> right okay. And I want them serving on those shite newspapers that, you know, the fake newspapers <laughs> fake everyone's serving them on now. <laughs> yeah, right. You okay. know, when you go into these places now and they come out and your chips, they make it look like your chips are still in the deep fat fryer yeah, like, the holder. Yeah, deep fat fryer. Yeah, coming out. And you're like, I know that's not, that's a utensil. <laughs> yeah. You didn't use that in the, that's a fake thing. Yeah. Just pour them onto the plate, just cut the shit. So, you know, I would, if I was me, Right? Chicken or hick? I'd go for a chicken, right? right? But I know people are going to say to you, no, no, don't. You have to get a fish and a Yeah, because it has to be fancy. It's You're supposed to be wedding. It's supposed to be beef for There's literally would be people sitting at the table going, I can't believe you put that money in a card and got chicken. No, because... That, pe <laughs> okay, so people people are going to be annoyed either way. I, I can tell you one thing, man. There's going to be uproar if you throw us out a ball of shite at this wedding. That's Stuff that we can't eat, like. <laughs> yeah, I know. If, if, if that... So if the beef comes out in front of Kendi, right? Yeah. And I have to say to your man, that's lovely, I'll, I'll actually take the rest of us. <laughs> I'll go mad. Because that's the other thing as well. The fancier you go, the smaller the portions. What? These people must have time. I have to say now, this, we're doing this differently. It's called a wedding feast, right? And it's the gourmet kitchen that are doing it for us. And they're very good at throwing loads out. So there'll be a big, massive yeah. platter of, of beef. Right. So there'll be enough beef there to feed six of you. Hang on now. For me alone, or do we all have to pull out of No, you all, everybody pulls out of it, but there's loads. <laughs> <laughs> no! It's a help yourself on the table. I hate help yourself Why? menus. Because I've been at those help yourself menus. And what, everybody else took it all on you, is yes. it? Yes. No, well, there'll be loads in there. I was at, no, there won't. They'll keep tapping it up. You're a liar. Stop there lying is, to me. There is a full truck of beef coming in. There, I'm telling you now, Ray, <laughs> I've been at these help yourself weddings, and for a finish, I'm going, come here, is there any old chomp bar or Fredo renting around the place? Because I'm absolutely starving. <laughs> there'll be a lot of chomp There's, there. honestly, I've been at those weddings before. Right. You don't, because what happens to me is, I get too embarrassed, and right. I go, no, no, it's grand, you keep... <laughs> <laughs> if you're nice yeah, about yeah. it. No, no, you have a third, fourth, fifth, <laughs> fifth servant, servant yeah. of us. And I'm actually grand here with the little bit that I got. And as you're well. looking at the hate going, no, not doing this. Yeah, <laughs> and that's the other thing. Everyone's going to go for the beef. You're going to go, oh, everyone just help yourselves into all this. We left the hake and the beef out there. <laughs> yeah. And I'm going to be like, anyone want the hake? No, everyone wants the beef. And then I'm starving. <laughs> I'd be drinking one of Ali's formula bottles. Or one of her shitty, her old um, spaghetti bolognese child's meals. Like. <laughs> okay. Um, this I know you're this reeling one. from no soup as well of course there's not a drop of soup man. where's the soup <laughs> where's the soup <laughs> where's the soup so there won't be a lump of bread or nothing on the table to get a store like Irish people <laughs> so the shock of bread in there no bread Irish people have we've done weddings right for a hundred years Ray. we've lobbed people out soup <laughs> vegetable soup yeah somewhere with around the, the somewhere the around the 80s someone went to France on holidays and came back with a volivant <laughs> And it absolutely <laughs> took over the island. It did. Yeah. And that's been on the menu ever since. We start with a soup, we go for a voulevant, and then we have an old beef or a lump of salmon. Yeah. And then 
Jeez, we haven't even gone on to the desserts yet. Well, right. this, if we, you we, tell can me... Can we talk about the sides? The oh, big yeah. issue today when I was on to the, the gourmet kitchen was I, talk, I rang him to ask him. I said, look... I'm, you I'm said there's an awful trouble here. No, I said, no, we're, we're fairly sorted there now. We're going to go with the Italian salad for the starter. Oh. We're going to go for the beef and we're going to go for the hake. Okay. And and a, a stupid vegan option that, you know... Oh, fuck that. No, yeah. they don't invite those people. And right. I said, the only place I'm having difficulty Sick. is the sides. And okay. you have to pick three sides out of a big long list of flat sides. Okay. And I says to him, I said, look at Troop Patrol, we're going to go for two spud here. We want roast Great. bud. Lovely. And we want a mash bud. Brilliant. Now we're talking I said, sense. I said, the only problem I'm having is there's a couple of different vegetable options. There's a falafel carrot and there's a <laughs> or no creme fraiche carrot oh. and then there's some sort of a, a honey roasted root vegetables no no I, I and root up the whole and then G- there's a seasonal norm- greens with mint and olive <laughs> sorry now just <laughs> boil the carrot and yeah. throw it onto my plate I love boiled carrots you don't have to do anything with them a little bit of salt oh lord above yeah. that's all you have to do this fella who's rooting out the spuds or whatever he's doing what's he rooting out <laughs> he's, he's that, rooting out no, these gammy old no, vegetables no, out of the garden no, out the back hold on so, yeah, Dirty so, old puppy so old gammy old veg. I'm happy enough with the two spud, but I just yeah. wonder which of the greens should I go with. And then he said, whoa, whoa, you can't go two spud. He said, people have enough in one spud. And I said, are you telling me? Are you trying to suggest that we don't go for two spud? This is what's wrong with this country now, yeah. this way. We're letting all the foreigners in. <laughs> <laughs> We're not. And sorry, they don't, don't understand. Stop it, he's Irish. Do, no, no. They don't. No, he's not. Ray. He's don't be a nice sh- to me. Irish chef. No, he's not, Ray. That fella, if he was an Irish <laughs> chef, he'd know well that two spud is a perfect way a to spud, enjoy a side. Spud. Yeah, yeah. sometimes you like both. If it was me, I had a four spud. I'd have a roast spud, <laughs> a mash spud, a boiled spud, and, and a garlic a, spud. And, a, and possibly a chip in there as well. Sure, the chip as well. Yeah. That's your fifth chip spud. Lovely, Five man. a day, Ray. That's yeah. what they say. <laughs> yeah. Five spud a day keeps yeah. the doctor away. They've always so said he, that. My mother always said that. He said I should be throwing in a fancy salad. So I should be going no. one spud, a nice green, and a fancy salad. No. For the people who love a fancy salad. That's a thundering disgrace. I nearly do an old Instagram survey and, and get the, yeah. the views of the wedding party. Yeah. To see which of them out of them likes a fancy salad. No one. Okay, so this fella who's saying to you, let's have a spud and a fancy salad. Mm. I'll be laughing at him, like, oh, now, now, <laughs> whenever, no eating the fancy when salad. he's out the back throwing it into the bin. Because we're <laughs> Irish people, Ray. Just we keep, like if an Irish around. man wants two spud, have Let two him. spud. Every time I go out to Folly Moulton's, right? <laughs> when I go out to Folly Moulton's, right? Molly they give Fulton's, me, for they, anyone's wondering. <laughs> they give me a mash spud. Yeah. And they give me a raw spud. Would you not be eating in our sponsors now, Anderson's Tremendous whenever Event Centre, are wonderful food items? Whenever I go in, actually, I did get it from Anderson's yesterday. Yeah. Whenever I go into Anderson's, I get a roast bud and a mash bud. Yes. And I get a chip as well. Sometimes I'll order a chip extra. <laughs> they wouldn't even charge for it. They don't. They go because to... they recognise the fact that you do need three spuds. Yeah, they yeah. know the three spud rule. <laughs> <laughs> they know. You're only asking for a simple old two spud meal. That's, that's what I was asking for. And this fella say, no, no, come out with a salad. I'm he sorry. At me down I'm the not phone. a rabbit. <laughs> I'm not eating a fucking salad. Especially after all the salad you've got right. so far in the meal. I'd be starved. Brendan was waving at me there for some reason. What brought... Uh, like, Ray's role play. If you be the waiter come to the table, I'll <laughs> <laughs> right, Ray's role play here. We're going to do another little bit of role play. Okay. Here I am. I am a representative from the gourmet kitchen, and I arrive down at the table to you. Tea towel on. Tea towel on, and I'm 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 handing you the beef and the hake. So you have the, the beef and the hake there now. Yeah. And I, and I hand you the. So the, you lay it down on the table, and I and I give you a spud, a salad, yeah. and a and a green. Okay. First of all, you lay down the the hake and the beef on the yeah. table, and I turn to you to say thanks very much, and I turn around, it's gone. The beef is gone. <laughs> You know? That's true. Oh, geez, thanks very much. All right, okay, it's only hate left, is it? Because no one. That's why you should have gone with chicken, because I'd go at least the chicken left now. <laughs> Everyone's going to eat the beef. <laughs> and then you've dropped me. Okay, then you drop down the spud and the salad and the whatever. What's the other yolk as well, man? Uh, spud, it's salad. Some kind of a smoothie. I uh, know, uh, a green. A seasonal greens. Yeah, but a seasonal green that he's had. coriander and common. You prick, man. Because <laughs> coriander overpowers everything that's ever been. It does, doesn't it? It overpowers. I thought of that there now. Coriander overpowers everything in his patch. So straight away, I'm, I'm more. What about the more, common? I'm more vexed. No, the common, man. Common. <laughs> Come in the place, right? Yeah. Come in the place is the <laughs> again way too far over. Put down. You, you're still the waiter here. We're role playing. Yeah. Sorry. Put down that, yeah. right? Okay. So you put down the piece. I put down it. Put it down, Ray. Oh, put down put, the piece. Put, put down the three of them now. Yeah. Don't make a scene now. It's our big day. I'm not making a scene. I'm at the top table here as well now. Yeah. I'm trying my best not to make a you're scene about now. About three se- three seats away from me. I'm already vexed at you know because you came out with the beef <laughs> and actually you promised to be loads. Ray's eating all the beef. If I'm being honest with you now, yeah, you promised to be loads of beef. <laughs> He's after having three servings of it there now, <laughs> and I'm left with a hake of shite. Okay. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. So 
I'm actually ripping at you, but what I do know is there's going to be substance in the next thing you drop down because you're definitely going to give me a whole array of ash bud. So throw down your three things there it's, now. It's a salad. Okay. It's, it's a, a mash. Okay, the mash. We're good. Okay. And, and, What's the last and a spud? seasonal green. Okay, two of them aren't spuds now straight no. away. There, I think you might have pronounced them wrong, if actually yeah. I'm being honest. <laughs> Should have said... Now, the greens there are covered in a lot of stuff that aren't from this land, actually, no. if I'm being honest. olive, mint. We were not... Yeah, olive and mint. Yeah. Give me a cornetto if I, when I want the mint. <laughs> I'll wait till the dessert for the mint, lovey. What about for the dessert, then? You have a choice of... Um... Well, okay, no, no, you have a choice of... I don't want to hear it. You have an apple crumble. <laughs> and you have a profiterole. <laughs> apple crumble and, and a... And a profiterole. And a profiterole. There are no profiteroles. Uh, there's a trio of ice cream. You no, know what... no, it's it's a it's a marinated Wexford strawberry or... Um, uh, peaches and, and vanilla mascarpone or stewed apples and vanilla mascarpone. I, that's even not how you pronounce mascarpone. Mascarpone, mascarpone played left Masc- back from Inter Milan. <laughs> Didn't he, Jeff, back in 91? <laughs> really? Uh, sorry, so no. one of those. Now, there's a brownie as well. The brownie is mandatory. Okay. Thank the oh, Lord. Oh, no, it's above. not. It's a brownie or a dark chocolate tart. <laughs> Brownie all the way, I think. A tart? Yeah, it's a miso brownie, so I think it comes in a little miso bowl of hungry. soup. Miso hungry, miso hungry, I didn't eat one of those fucking things. There's a, you just went through four or five courses there now. I didn't need anything. I, I'm starving, really. <laughs> There's burgers at half ten. The dessert actually is driving me mental now. Why? that is so stupid. Because people just want a little bit of ice cream. They do. Stop. I don't think there's any ice cream on it. What's wrong with these people? <laughs> How are they getting any business time? I'll be honest with you now, you're going to have to wait and see now in six or seven weeks' time when it all comes out. I don't want to ruin your big day. I know, but you sa- I sound like you've ruined it already. And I'm going to try and not make a big deal out of it on the day. Yeah. I'm going to be burning up inside. <laughs> the rage. Wanting to say something. Yeah. Well, you should say it. I'm I- going to say it to them. Yeah. <laughs> say it to them. <laughs> like... The, the dessert now really got me there for a finish. Like, yeah. why would you not just put a simple tart on it? Well, like? there is kind of a... It's, it's the apples from the tart with the mascarpone. What? Who is it's, mascarpone? It's, it's mascarpone. Is this the fella we're supposed to blame for all <laughs> no, of this? No, it's not. Who's mascarpone? What, what, what's Mars- mascarpone? What is, it, what is the vanilla mascarpone? Look it up there, Brendan. How do you pronounce it? Mascarpone. Mascarpone. Mars and Capone. Mars and Capone. Mars and Capone, <laughs> brother of Al. What? Oh, yeah. It's a, yeah, it's a vanilla, fluffy little... Cheese and apples. Cheese and apples. Yeah. yeah. Cheese and apples. <laughs> like, you're all sneering. Uh. <laughs> everyone sneered at Kendi when, <laughs> when he got married out the road. Like, yeah. ah, he's getting married where everyone got married. But Jesus Christ, I'll tell you one thing, people man. People got fed. Jeez, people got fed, right? <laughs> people got fed. People got fed. Right, we're 20 It might have been where now. half a cycle got married, right? But people got Come fed on that now, day. Let's move on. I have other things I need to talk about. I don't want to ruin your big day. You sound like you're ruining our big day. No, but I've I, I hold a lot of stuff in, Ray. <laughs> I, I can't hold this in. This is a disgrace of a menu. There's been right, thank you. Noted. I also got my suit jean this week. And oh. I'm racked with guilt. Why? Because the price of us. No, I went somewhere else. Yeah. You, yeah. You didn't go to EJ's? No. Really? Yeah. So I, you have obviously taken everything that's ever been done in this town before yeah. and said, I'm sick of all ye bastards. <laughs> I'm going to have a stupid menu <laughs> in a stupid venue. You're right. Where you can't, no one can sleep there. You have sleeping tents. <laughs> and I'm going to, I'm not going to go to just for the suits. So what is it about us that, that you, <laughs> no, well, what is it about that, all the rest of us no, no, that no. has you thinking you're better than us? So, no, I don't. I think you're better than me. I'm getting the better than them. Okay. No, the suit jean thing, I didn't realise that EJ's actually do made to measure suits. So I was getting a normal standard suit, right? But part and parcel of that process of me getting the normal standard suit was six months of hard training down in TNT gym. Yeah, I think you were there once, I remember. Yeah, I was there once, but I didn't go again. And (laughs) and therefore, I am not the size I'd like to be for my wedding. I think you look beautiful the way you you. are. Thank you, Mark. But however, I have such things as love handles. Yeah, they're brilliant though. They yeah. are, and they stick out in normal suits. So a gentleman friend of mine, young Mr. Mulhern, he said to me, why don't you go and get a suit tailored? Because did you get that tailored he out He said, of get it. a tailored out of it. So yeah. I said, right, sound, I'll, I'll look into that. Yeah. I didn't think EJ's did the tailoring. DJs do everything. Ray, don't and you know? And of course, know? Mr. Mulhern being from Donegal, immediately recommended the only thing he knew, which was from Donegal, which was McGee in Donegal. Yeah. This is what Miggledy wears. Is it? Miggledy Higgins has all of his suits made from McGee. Oh, right. And you're going up there with the big <laughs> stu- again. Kalala, Ray. Don't forget you're from Kalala now. Sorry. 
You get up there and get the baggy suit. I wanted your to wedding. get up. I wanted to go up and to make a suit that fitted me, so that I wasn't going to be walking around like a prisoner in my own clothes in the day, in my big day. What would have been better? I wanted to look like a princess. Okay, McGee's is brilliant <laughs> and all that, and you deserve to look like the it's princess my you are. Yeah, it is your day. Laura you deserve got a dress. Can yeah. I not get something? You do deserve of a dress. all that. But all I'm saying is, for the money that McGee are going to charge you now, right? Yeah. For the money that McGee are going to, me and you could have went to Thailand, got <laughs> fiddled with by lady boy hooers, yeah. Oh, yeah. and then got a suit made for a tenor. Yeah. And it would have been lovely. You go back in the next day. You can, people. Anyone out there, fellas, you have to know this. You can go to Thailand and get a suit for about $30, yeah. and then while you're waiting for it to get met, get fiddled with by a whore. <laughs> she might have a big pair of balls, but <laughs> fuck it, lads. Try at it and whoops. Big swinging four pair oh, of balls. Big old swinging old pair of balls, but you can knock at the door on them. Knock, yeah. knock, 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 knock. How are you so, going? Uh, yeah, so I went up anyway, and lo- the loveliest man, Kieran, he, he? he he dealt with me. He measured me up. It would took nearly two hours. <laughs> Because I didn't realise that's going. That's going to get a bit. I don't need a bigger measuring tape there, Shabby. I'm about to get a laser measure. Yeah. <laughs> Will someone get the air stick? Can someone get the 3D mountains <laughs> off her? This is a huge bit. Step into that there. <laughs> Hands out like you're in the airport. <laughs> Oh, Jesus you. Christ Anyway no So I went up to Kieran And anyway, I booked in there For a one o'clock slot Yeah And I was there Till nearly three Yeah And I had no idea What was in, what was in, entailed In getting a suit oh, made I, I, I say boys like that now They really It's like build a, a bear Yeah it's attention to detail It's job. A like a build You basically build the suit From the from the bottom up Go away. So you have to pick out the First of all you have to pick They start sewing it around you <laughs> Raise up as far as the calf you Now yes Go back up again <laughs> You pick The big scaffold up around you um, <laughs> No, you pick out the, the the fabric, right? And then you have to pick out the back of the, the the back of the waistcoat, which is a different fabric. Oh, that's right, yeah. And then you have to pick out the buttons. Yeah. And then you have to pick out the, the threads that the buttons get sewed on with. Jesus. And then there's a load of other little colours that goes in different places. That's too and much. And then you have to decide, do you want three pockets in the front? Do you want two pockets? That's too much to be dealing with. Do you want a straight line of, of buttons on the waistcoat, or do you want double-breasted? Oh, the big double breast, Danny. Yeah. See, that's too much for most fellas, though, Ray. You have to understand that. Most fellas, when they go for a suit, what they love about it is... They walk into a suit place and your man puts one on and he says you, to him, that's geez, lovely. Geez, that's nice. Yeah. And you go, is it? That's yeah. what fellas do. They go, yeah. is it? And yeah. then he goes, just, that's good now. I might just take up the leg a bit. It'll be yeah. ready tomorrow. And yeah. you go, great. No, mine was different because he was talking about putting in centimetres on the back for the love handle. He's got to put a centimetre in that, <laughs> yeah. Was he? Yeah. he actually? So he's putting centimetres. He's taking, and I, I had one jacket on that looked a bit long on me. Yeah. And I said, it's a bit long. And he said, I'll give you a jacket that's a half a centimetre less long. And that changed everything. It changed my whole world. Did I looked like a million dollars immediately. I, the difference in half a centimetre. So and I, I know Nicola will tell you this, but the difference in half a centimetre is massive. <laughs> <laughs> See, she notices it on me yeah, sometimes. I'd say so, yeah. When I'm not fully there. Yeah. She says, I know you're not fully there, but there's usually about that much there. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. I think that you're dead right. This is... Fuck Laura, okay? Yeah. This is your this day. This is my day. If I'm... For me and all the boys, this is Ray's day. Yeah, I've known you long enough now, Ray. I never thought this day would come with the head in you. Thanks right? very much. And you've done well to get where you have. Yeah. Buy that suit. Look as good as you can. Put me and Sean and Barry in, in rags. Yeah. Right? And make us look like a shower. Well, yeah, I've kind of used most of the budget now for the suits. Doesn't matter. I had about twelve hundred for the suits set aside, and that's most that's gone. gone now. Yeah. Well, so okay. So I'm what gonna, are we wearing? I'm going to rent. Maybe 60 euro suits then for you. Yeah, but rent bad ones as oh, well. Oh, bad ones. Bad terrible legs. Ones, ones like, that don't you even know. fit you. Yeah, you yeah. know the ones with I the left hand stuff. And fist. I need to make Sean O'Reilly look bad at this way. Yeah, do ones where I have to roll up the arm sleeves because yeah. like, they're can't. way too long. I can't be standing beside you, gentlemen. No, no, definitely I, not. You I can't need be all the help I can get. I need a suit that yeah. it fits me perfectly besides all my flaws. And mm. then I need you looking estate. Yeah, yeah, and you, but you should have us looking estate. Yeah, though, I have to tell you a story about Alan Clark. Go on. Your best friend, is it, yeah? Yeah. Go on. The last night, I was asleep. And I got up, and I, I'm sorry we didn't record this. He called over, did he? No, he didn't call over, no. <laughs> Booty call. No, Alan did not call over. However, I must have been dreaming about him. Oh. Because I got up in the middle of the night. Yeah. I. You might be aware that Alan Clark has a big show coming up, up inside in the TF in yeah. Castle Bar. In and we, we're going. We're going. We have five tickets bought. We do. Right? For the two of us. For the two of us. <laughs> <laughs> we, have, we have plenty of room in the seat. Yeah. <laughs> Somewhere for the jackets. Yeah. We have five tickets for us. A big gang of us going up mm. and supporting himself. And there's no point in us advertising it because the bastard sold it all oh, out. Oh, so he had it sold out straight away? Yeah, yeah 3,000 people Bastards. all bought it that morning. Unbelievable. So, he, he's actually thinking about doing Crow Park next. Yes. If you can get the five nights. <laughs> get the five nights, yeah. yeah. 23rd of September, we're going up to this thing. I have five Ticketmaster tickets that we got in the post. Mm-hmm. Very old school. And I have them up beside the mirror in the room. Oh, brilliant. So I got up in the middle of the night and I went over. I took them down off the mirror. And commenced to count them <laughs> twice. <laughs> Did Laura see this? Laura woke up and said, what are you doing? I said, I just have to check the tickets. 
Oh my god! And then she came over to me and she said, "Why, why are you counting the? Day? I just wanted to check to make sure oh, they're all there." Can I ask? Was this Saturday night, Sunday morning? Nah. Fuck, because that was when you were at your highest stress. I no, think, but whatever night it was, anyway, it was just the weirdest bit of sleepwalking I've done in a long time. Well, Alan, and he double checked them by double checked. They're all there. Five tickets and I put them back in the mirror. Jeez, that's unreal. You were high stressed though again for sure. I must have been, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. you don't do that. And otherwise. that's what happens. Like I worry about Alan Clark's tickets. <laughs> when, <laughs> when Ray's stressed out, he's worried about. If we, we lose Alan Clark's tickets or not. Yeah. We know we can get him backstage. Did we talk about Ballygar? Did you hear that? I did. The Wild Youth. Yeah. What did you hear about it? Wild. So I played that Ballygar festival for years. Can we say it for those who don't know where Ballygar is? Can you please describe Ballygar? So Ballygar is, um, is the Roscommon side of Galway. It's a mythical town. It's beautiful. The town is so Roscommon that Galway would nearly go, you could have it, but they won't let us, the council yeah. won't let us give it to you. Yeah. So it's right there on that border of Galway, uh, Roscommon. It's kind of like a strange love child of the two counties. It is a little bit, yeah. yeah. And those kids are pretty ugly. No, it's actually a lovely town. No, it genuinely is. Ballygar yeah. is a great place. I did that festival with Hot Fuss for years Let's and years. Let's talk about the festival. So the festival is great. Do you want to know why the festival is great? Why? Because there's... Parish committee. Be yeah, parish committee number one. They are unreal. Because the Cassidy Rose Festival was just on again. Yeah. And can I just say... Absolutely unbelievable what they're doing. I saw a picture of the Tumbling Kendys playing at us. Mm -hmm. Thousands and thousands of people at this thing. And Cassidy Row Society and the council and all that, whatever they're, the town's trust, they bought this stage, Ray, mm. that can be moved around. You wouldn't see it down at the Rose of Tralee, this stage that Massive. they bought. Carter did this. The Tumbling Paddies did this. La Bamba did this. Do you think the Tumbling Kendys are going to run out of steam, by the way? You'd worry about them, like... You they mean they're going like, to burn out? Like they just sound like they're gigging every other so, night that there is in the world. You know, you know, like all those festivals, hmm. the small fest. They've done every one of them except for the Ballygar Festival this year. Now, because they said we'll go a little bit off time. Let's go. They've higher, done the Cassidy Rose Festival. <laughs> they've done. They've done the Grange Fest. They've done every festival. They said let's go up for the big dicks. They said yeah. let's go Eurovision here. Let's go Eurovision. Dan is not around. Let's yeah. go Eurovision. Let's Linda Martin isn't available. No, Johnny so, Logan like, can't do it. He's got a sore leg. <laughs> He's got an infection in the leg. Megetigan is too busy doing pubs. Megetigan is too, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Let's and guess. So, let's guess Wild Youth. Am I right yes, in saying that? That's right. No, I don't know Wild Youth from Adam. Do you not? I don't know them at all. I know what they did at the... at the. They have some good tunes. At the Eurovision. Okay. The tune so, of the Eurovision was shite. So everything I'm going to say now yeah. is I don't know the lads. Right. And they're very, very welcome to come on here and defend themselves. I would welcome okay. that. I, I, I mean, genuinely now, because I'm going to go Kendi on it now. Can I set the tone? Just set go the Kendi. tone. One lady in Ballygar said it was the worst experience of her life. And she's been through a lot now. <laughs> you have to wonder, when someone's been interviewed by the media and said, really, how did, the, how did what happened make you feel? The and worst. she said, that was the worst thing that ever happened to me. Yeah. I in mean, my she, whole life. This woman's lived through COVID. Yeah. And uh, the worst thing that ever happened was that they played for 50 minutes. <laughs> so apparently they had a gig earlier that day. So they were in Cork that day. Yeah, and they rushed up <laughs> by helicopter or some form. Oh, man, apparently they yeah. boosted it all together. Boosted up the road to yeah. play at the Big Belly Gar Festival. Big, yeah, but they, see, now what you're doing there now is I didn't do this. anything. No, you're belittling the Big Belly Gar Festival. That's what they did, you see. So it doesn't matter how big or small the gig is, Ray. And the Belly Gar Festival is big. You know the Belly Gar Festival is big. When Joe Kniff is in there hanging curtain <laughs> with the daughter, right? Sorry. Draping out, draping out a gym. That's what I love about those festivals. The boys played basketball in here in 1998. Have a look at it now. They drape out the whole gym, Ray. It's like the O2. It's like the O2 when you go in. It is. They yeah. put a big bar down the back and the boys come in and they go, Hee -oh! and they drink cans of Bulmers all nice. And it's brilliant. And you know what happens then? The the, the, the civil defence. Yeah. And the guards. And the Order of Malta. The guards came in. I told this story on, the on this programme before, so this podcast. The, the guards came in and he said, one night in there, he said, well, lads, will we have a can? Uh, right? And I said, I can't have a can because I'm actually driving back to Sligo tonight. He said, Jesus, I'm not going to be stopping this, right? I'm here. What? And I said, Jesus Christ, mate! <laughs> that's great. I said, Jesus Christ. I said, you might not. I said, but the, I said, the second I get the fire side of us common, that's out of your jurisdiction. No shame, me. I slipped into what happened. The Wild Youth Boys also slipped into this frame of mind. Yeah. They were driving up the road going, Jesus, Small are, we, are we playing the Big Belly Gar Festival? Yeah. And that was their thinking. It seems from the report. That's yeah. That's what now. Now these things get blown out of proportion, Ray. Mm. You have the left side and you have the right side. Yeah. And usually the truth is somewhere in around the middle. Yeah. But let's go left side, right side here for a minute. So we're late enough starting. They were supposed to start at half twelve. They started at twenty. I think it's one. twelve. Twelve is what they said. But really, uh, I've done that festival. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
That festival yeah. is run on Irish time. Band so on when stage at twelve o'clock. They used to tell us like, ah, you might be on around half eleven. You're not. You're on a quarter to one. You're right. Okay. Yeah. You know? No, that makes sense. Yeah. You know, that's always the case because yeah. the people are down the town in the pub. So you're always at. I'm sorry now. Go there again now. You're yeah. on at half eleven. Yeah. And you start at quarter to one. Yeah, I, I Am mean, I right in thinking that's an hour and fifteen minutes? That's how late they were. So, <laughs> so what? That's exactly what Wild no, Root did. Yeah, is it, you're on at twelve. Uh, that's quarter. But it doesn't one. matter though. If the committee say to you twelve o'clock, lads, yeah, you, you should be ready to go at twelve o'clock. Yeah, you should be. Do you know yeah. what I mean? I don't care if if for ten years beforehand you know you didn't start till half twelve. Yeah. If they say twelve, be there at twelve. The lads didn't start at twenty past one. The lads started at twenty past one and they finished at ten past two. They did. No, no. What? This is where I won't defend the committee. Oh. Because the committee should know. If you book a Hot Fuss, a Mikey Denver, yeah. a Declan Ernie, a Tumbling Kendi, a Tumbling Kendi, the boys have two hours they are ready to go because they were gigging band. Yeah. Now, yeah. isn't that facts right that's now? Facts. Tell me that's facts. You can Google it, it's science. While you Google science and you come up with it and say, <laughs> Mike Denver do do two, two hours. hours. Yeah. <laughs> You'd be guaranteed at least two hours with Mike They're Denver. Gonna go- <laughs> He's gig fit. Google it. He's gig fit. How lads. long does Mike Denver normally play for? He do do two hour eh? <laughs> rate. You do do it. I love it actually come up as that you know the proper Google results <laughs> going. Mike Denver is known to play at least two hours of a set. He do do two hours. He do do two hours. The, you should know by wild youth with the Orvision heads on them and the original yeah, set. The yeah. original set. There isn't an original boy in the world. If not Spruce Sprinkling, who will do a two hour set? No. So they should have had that flag. They should. Someone should have said. Ring Wild Youth and make sure they have two hours. Yeah. To, be, to which they would have said, no, no, we we have eight original songs. And we couldn't be arsed doing the gig we, And no one knows any of them. <laughs> yeah. No one knows any of the songs. We don't want to do them, but we'll do the eight of them. It'll take us ah, 45 minutes to an hour. Yeah. It'll cost you £15,000, but that's what it is. Yeah. Someone should have flagged all of that. So that's where I won't offend the Ballygar Festival. Yeah. They should have flagged all of that. They should have known what they were getting. They should have known what you were getting. But then the boys come out on the stage. Yeah, the boys come out. Na- and now, I don't know if this is true or not. Someone said there was cans of Heineken. The boys were out of us, oh, yeah. apparently. Yeah. Now, we don't know. They can come in here and defend themselves. But they said, them, apparently, they were kind of said, we're so happy to be playing here in Ballygar. Now, they could have been actually happy to be playing in Ballygar. Yeah, but and he... And people maybe thought they were being sarcastic and facetious. Your man said, we're so happy. <laughs> but that, so if I was... I mean, let's be the devil's advocate here. Now, how did he say it? We are so <laughs> happy. Yeah, that sounds genuine. Yeah, the thing is, they probably were saying stuff in tongue-in-cheek, lads. Ah, look, we're in a gym. Yeah. You know what I mean? Ah, look, lads, we're doing the, the gym in between Roscommon and Galway, in the crack, yeah. right down the book crack of yeah. Roscommon and Galway, and we're stuck in a gym here. Do you remember we did your vision with all the boys a couple yeah. of months ago? Oh, how the mighty. So There probably was a, 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 a little bit of watershed cheek. moments yeah, there for a little them. Bit. Yeah, now we're speaking on behalf of them as well. Come in, come in, defend come yourselves. In, come, out, t- come out and fight. Yeah. Right, and so, and they may hear it because last week we talked about urinal talk, and the gentleman that does the urinal yeah. talk videos, he got on to us and said, yeah, "Thanks very much for the shout out." Mad, didn't it? So you you have to be careful who is uh, listening. Listen. Now, how we <laughs> have to get the Google of how long does Mike Denver concert two and a half hour Mike do do? That is not on the internet, is it? And it says high energy concert. <laughs> it's like two and a half hour, like Hindi would say. Two and a half hour. Now, would you do me a favor and look up how long does Wild Youth normally? How play? long do I? Uh, th- <laughs> You know exactly what's going to come up. Anyway, Ballygar released a statement saying, we're very, very sorry. We've yeah. come to an agreement with the boys. I think what happened there was they obviously came up against the big dicks of the Dublin Wild Youth uh, management system, which yes. I presume they have, who said, no, no, no way. <laughs> what did they say now? In the, no way. In no the way. contract. Yeah. It said they were only going to do 40, 40 minutes. You got yeah. five minutes extra. There's no way you little f- cold cheese. Cold cheese, giving us a so, bad name. Yeah, given, yeah so they probably had... And then while you realised the backlash, because it was all over every news channel. Apparently they got booed off the stage. Yeah, yeah apparently, apparently. But you don't know how Because there was a girl is. there, and it was the worst thing she'd ever happened to her. Ever happened to her her whole life. Yeah. Yeah, this is a woman who actually was went through, she lived up in Belfast during the Troubles, all of that. <laughs> yeah. This is she, the worst she thing that happened. She lived through World War Two. She was around in yeah. World War Two as well. This yeah. is the worst thing that she happened in, to her. Yeah, Michael Her- Collins was her grandfather. She was they, in Hiroshima for a holiday, one very faithful weekend. She was. Yeah, she got yeah. Bl- she was blown away by the place. <laughs> no, no, no. This woman, the worst thing that ever happened to her was while you'd played for 45 minutes. And, but I wonder why she said it as in, I wish they didn't play, as what she's saying, the worst thing about the whole night was that while you'd played for 50 minutes. Do you know what I mean? Maybe, yeah. Maybe she was saying, I wish they didn't play. Anyway, we're not saying that about the boys. They're, they're, Here's the thing Far more successful than us yeah. Far smarter than us Far and better I like them. Far better si- singers and musicians Than all of us They have Ma- tremendous tunes I'd love to hear their side of the story yeah. I'd love if they came on And gave the exclusive here On Kendi and Raybo As to what actually happened that night Yeah 
and step out. That fateful night. Maybe step, they're waiting for the book deal. Do you know what I mean? What are they called again? While you while step you. it out, while you, my fine band, yeah. come out and talk to us. Do you know? <laughs> That's very good. Unbelievable. I enjoyed that little piece now. Yeah. Have I other bits for you? I do. Go on. Um, Hag Stravaganza took place at the weekend. Oh, yeah. It's so, the White Hag Festival. Now, how long did the band play there? The band played there for uh, an hour and 45 minutes. Oh, that was that was pre-arranged. Pre-arranged an hour and 45 minutes. So they had yeah. 15 minutes in the barrel. They had. They did. And they would mo- and more. And they could have kept you know, going. Yeah, they could and have the, And they would have kept going. The Hag Stravaganza Festival is probably one of the best things you'll ever do with yourself of a day out. I have seen it. Yeah. In the flesh. Yeah. I've worked at it in the flesh. The only thing is, it's unreal. you walk in, you have to hand over money and buy tokens. That's a thundering disgrace. It's a bit like Spending going to a, money. A, a, a fun fair with alcohol. Also, you, you, you buy, can't spend money. You can't spend money in it. Right. So you, uh, tokens are little red Monopoly tokens or, or, or Connect Four tokens. So I know what they did with all the yellow ones because it's all red tokens. So it's extravaganza currency. It's yeah, great. So, yeah, exactly. Great so you, idea. Buy, you buy three euro gets you a token. Right, right? okay. So I, and what does one token get you? One token will get you a glass of beer. A glass of beer. Glass of beer. So two tokens get you a pint of beer. That's right. That's right. That's right. And how, if, what if you wanted a dog? So now this is the thing. So I had to get used to the whole. The token like system. everything is just changed. So if I'm used to how much is a pint, it's five sixty. Great. Yeah. And I ha- heard that wasn't just high extravaganza. That's the currency they use in Ballymoss. Oh, it's got its own. <laughs> It's its own currency. So Ballymoss, where high extravaganza it's takes part, tokens. they have talk because people there were getting confused <laughs> when they changed over to the euro. You see, yeah, it didn't work. Ballymoss were getting very confused because the wind. They only got wind of that in 2006 <laughs> or seven. So yeah, yeah, a couple of years after. What afterwards. do you mean you've changed the currency? What? They were saying what? The punt. So they said, lads, this confusing the hell out of everyone yeah. in the town. We'll just use tokens. Yeah, what and about we're going to <laughs> count everything in three euros. Yeah, so everything was in three euros. So one red little token is three euros. Now, right. I went down and I, I didn't, uh, I was supposed to get a few tokens for the food because I was working there. But of course, I didn't get them. So I said, I'm just going to go down and support the festival. I'm going to buy some now, tokens. I'd say the same thing as well. I don't want the free stuff. I'd rather support this. Yeah, I'm going to go down and support yeah. the festival. Yeah. So I went down to the lady at the entrance desk and I said, I'd like to buy some tokens. <laughs> and it was, like, it was like three for a five or six for a ten or 14 for nine. Yeah. And all this sort of, it was befuddling me straight away. Yeah. So I, imis- I, I initially went, ah, could you give me ten? And then she said, that's 30 euro. And I went, Jesus, that's an awful lot for 10 tokens. <laughs> you thought the exchange rate there was, was very like, bad. I was like, I don't want to give you, t- I don't think I'm going to spend 30 quid on site. <laughs> I said, I don't think I want 30 quid worth of stuff. Jeez. I said, give me, me, give me five. Give me five of them. Yeah, she said, you can get six for 15. And I said, oh, that's a good deal now. Yeah, so. I'll take six. So I took six tokens, right? Right. <laughs> Now, what would six tokens have got you without? They there? would have got me six, uh, six pints, six glasses of beer. No. Uh, four tokens would have been a pizza. Not bad, though. Not bad. What is she, a 12 inch? <laughs> she would have be been uh, something around a 12 inch. Yeah, yeah. Where Between. I fell down was I had a ham sandwich with me. Oh, yeah. And I ate my ham sandwich, and then I thought I'd love a cup of tea and a Kit Kat. Right. So I decided to go and get a cup of tea and a Kit Kat. Jeez, you're talking two talking there straight know, away. But I, this is the problem. I went down and I said to him, I said, How much for the tea and the Kit Kat? And he said, Oh. And this is where he was having ah, problems. He's, hag- he's going, <laughs> no, all right, give me one and a half no, to I can't split the tokens. No, see, he can't split tokens. See, this is why Bally Moore's falling behind, you see, as well, because... <laughs> he can't split the tokens. This kind of... This three euro increment thing that they're doing there where it goes yeah. up and up, that's... The rest of the world has moved on, Bally so this, was, this was the problem. So if I gave him one token, I was, wasn't really paying for festival prices for yeah. a tea and a Kit Kat. Yeah, because festival price is about two and a half tokens. It's, it's, it's about one and a half token. Probably about one and a half token. One You're right, Chris. Sorry. Yeah. So we had this interesting moment where I forgot the value of the tokens. And I immediately said, sure, I'll give you the two for it. And he got pure guilty and he said, I'll give you two Kit Kats and the tea. So he wanted to give me an extra Kit Kat. And it was only minutes later I realised I'd paid six euro for a cup of tea and a Kit Kat. I'm awful confused. I once <laughs> bought a car in Ballymoss. It was 480 tokens. I bought the car for it. I bought it off the villa. He wanted 500 tokens. I said, I'll give you 480 tokens oh, now. Stop. I said, take it or leave us. I'll oh, give you 480 God. tokens. And then I gave him back five I gave him back five tokens. <laughs> then. Tokens for luck. Look, look yeah, Penny, I gave him back five tokens. tokens. That's, yeah, so I tell you the token thing. You want, you wouldn't want to be drunk. A bag of chip and belly board, two tokens. <laughs> two tokens, yeah. That's an ex- no, it's one token for it's a bag of chip. It's one token for a bag of chip and belly board. Three euro. It's not bad. Like, what sounds better, three euro or a token? But what if you had to get a bag of, a bag of chip and a Coke? It can't go two token because you're giving six euro for a bag of chip yeah, and a Coke. Yeah, but in Ballymote, you can't buy a bag of chip and a Coke, but you can buy a bag of chip and two can of Coke. <laughs> you have to give a two can of Coke. Oh, God. You can't buy one can of Coke. And- oh, and that was my problem. Yeah. I handed him back the second Kit Kat. I said, no, thanks, you're fine. I don't want this. Because everybody knows Kit Kats don't travel well. You either eat them when you get them or they're going to be no, a big melty mess in your yeah. hand. 
<laughs> so that's if you just keep that in mind. If you're out in Gormley's Bar there with Bally Walsh or yeah. whatever, or Hayden's you can't. Is, Hayden's is now reopened now, I believe. Or Hayden's the, is open up there as well. Of the White Hag. Lovely. Best of luck to Paul and Sinead. Oh, brilliant. Okay. Who are running it. Um, but that's fully tokens. They have a great, yeah, it's fully token fully tokens, based bar. Uh, yeah. But they have a good deal there now <laughs> yeah, on yeah. for the opening weekend of the place. <laughs> two pints again is for two tokens. You can get two pints of guinea for two tokens. <laughs> now, usually. Usually, if there's two of you there, you'd, uh, you'd have to buy four pints of Guinness. You can get five for three tokens. You can get five for three tokens, you see. <laughs> it's very raffle tickets. Yeah. It's it's really uh, culture Ireland yeah. so that is economics. La- that, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> is if you're going out doing business out in the independent republic of Ballymore, let's... <laughs> Just keep in mind they're on a different currency out there altogether. There was a trad band on at one stage, and of oh, yeah. course, someone had to shout up, Freebird! Oh, of course. I'm getting sick I, to death. Yeah, I'm people sick to death. Stop stolen. asking me for Freebird. I'm playing the acoustic guitar on my own. I can barely play Wagon Wheel. Wagon Wheel. And you're yeah. asking me to play that. Uh, I heard Lukey's band were unreal out they there, were. by the way. We'll just finish on that because I heard they were unbelievable. The, out Hoppen, there. the Tony, Luke, and the Hoppenheimers. There we go. Uh, the Hoppenheimers. The Hoppenheimers. That's great. I heard the place was Hoppen. Yeah. Hoppen, beer. Yeah. Beer. Uh, they were very good now. Uh, you know, beer and Hoppen. Um, happy beer. Crooked Trag were playing there as well. They're very good too. Crooked Thread. Crooked Thread. Brilliant. I heard it was a. I didn't get I must check my emails again because they didn't ask me. To gig, I'm, I, I'm obviously missed us. Yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> come here. Have you ever heard of the film Blues Brothers? How are we for time? Yeah. Okay. No, no, I'm okay. I was check. Yeah. Blues have, Brothers. Yeah. Yeah. Blues, have you watched it? Yeah. Blues Brothers, one of the best films going. Okay. Yeah. So here's where me and Laura differ. She doesn't like. Blues I Blues sat Brothers. her down last night and I said, "Me and you're going to have to watch a key piece of our cultural identity." Yeah, and also which is the Blues Brothers. Laura loves musicals Loves musicals like, And it is effectively A musical movie It is a musical With now, choreography by the way Yes there is choreography in it And there's even choreography In the final scene Yeah You know the car scene Where they're all crashing Yeah That's a chore- choreographed Laura, Car crash scene Like I scene. thought you were Pretentious enough Laura To actually get that That's a so, choreographed Car chase She said crash. that It was the car chases That put her off she said, why would anyone enjoy multiple cars crashing into each other it's in a chari- slapstick fashion? Yeah, but it's so put together. It's really... You're such a bitch, Laura, actually. Sorry, no. <laughs> but, like, for a woman who loves musicals, to not get what Blues Brothers is... No, she is, did get some... Like, she got the laughs out of it. All the original jokes are in it. Like, oh, you, what kind of music to play here? Country and Western? Yeah. You know? Uh, yeah. There was another another funny joke as well. And I forget what that was. I love how the... Ki- <laughs> Ray's like, I, I'm trying to remember other parts that I enjoyed in the film. Can't remember them. And Ray, Racy Charles just come into oh, it as well. Oh, Racy Charles comes in as well. Yeah, big Ray blind Charles. head in them, yeah, the man. Big blind head in them, indeed. Somebody was, someone said to him, did you watch the film afterwards? Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> he said, I don't, know what a, I don't know what a film is. Yeah. Uh, Blues Brothers is one of the best films. She, yeah, so we, we had to stop just at the final bit where they were trying to get into Chicago to get the money in for the Penguin. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for the we, penguin, for the I penguin. love it. We, yeah. the, the nun that they were trying to save the yeah. home, a really admirable cause. Yeah, but yeah, at the very end, she's like, "I can't be dealing with this anymore. There's just too many cars crashing into each other." That's the, pe- the, the whole mall. Scene this is the, the same yeah. bitch who'd watch Miss Congeniality. Or whatever I think it's it was called, marvelous. Or Legally Blonde. And yeah. think it's marvelous. Yeah, yeah. See, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Laura's not as cultured as she thinks. Right? Don't marry her. Do you know there was a section where um, at the big concert at the end, where Cab Calloway was yeah. trying to. Um, uh, trying to waste some time yeah. till the boys got there. That's right. He did a song called Minnie the Moocher. Yeah. And they all changed into this kind of jazz club. Mm-hmm. And they were all like in black tuxedos and yeah. they had little white stands in front of them. Yeah. And the whole lot. Laura turned around and go, What's after happening there now? And I said, Well, that's kind of going with the song. It's a, you know, it's a film. It, you How know, do you not get the context it's of art- artistic license? Artistic license. Yeah. Musicals <laughs> are only artistic license. Yeah. You have to pretend that music is coming from the hills. Yeah. It's the hills are alive with the stuff. Where is there a band behind the mountain? Yeah. <laughs> Where is the music coming from? You're supposed, to, Laura. You're supposed yeah. to understand artistic license. Sitting there watching license. Hamilton going, but they're not even in a war. Yeah, they're talking about war, but there's no war going on. Yeah, in West Side Story. Yeah. you know what happens if West Side Story is set in Dublin? They kill each other. <laughs> They stab each other to death. Yeah, this isn't real at they, all. In, in West Side Story, they just dance at each other. Yeah. Come on, come on, yeah. I'm going to give it to me. That. Like, that's artistic license. Yeah. That's unbelievable. Grease, he was a diddler. I don't think she wants... <laughs> that's the artistic license. What do you mean he was a diddler? John Travolta, yeah. he says... She's like, in, in that song, tell me more, tell me more. Yeah, did she the have whole, a car? Did she put up a fight? No, because he can't be diddling her. <laughs> 
That's sexual abuse, John Tavulja, but the artistic license is that in a musical you're allowed to do whatever you want. Yes. So he was allowed to go diddling. You're like flicking her like that on her diddies and everything. You're allowed to do that in a musical. So for Laura not to get the artistic license that the whole set can change. Yeah, I thought that was there. And then at the real end, then with bam 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 And then he goes, Come on, everyone out now, down to the floor and we all lift the bass out. I actually said to her that um the middle of that song that everybody needs somebody. I said I could take the middle of that and actually use it as a reading at the wedding. Uh, you know which when lines? you do find that someone that special, someone that love, throw, yeah, all that yeah, sort of yeah. stuff. Yeah, that's like that yeah. is what gave every Irish wedding band the confidence to go out and do it. Was that speech? Absolutely. Because whenever you start an Irish wedding mm-hmm. with something like that or Castle on the Hill or whatever people yeah. do to start, and then the main man has to give a speech just like that. That's right. And that's where they take all the inspiration from. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, folks, let's get you up onto the floor for the bride and groom. This is David and Ashley's big day, and we need your help. Doom, more doom, than ever doom, doom, to make doom, this a doom, night to remember doom, doom, so let's get everyone up let's get a circle around the floor and let's get the bride and groom in the middle and let's get this party started everybody need somebody that's you knew what I was doing that yeah. we fucking that's what it is we should start a wedding band we should start a wedding band and call it the Atlantic what what who said that Fuck me, I'm on a buzz now after that. I hate Laura more than I ever hated her before yeah, now. I know, yeah. But to talk about the Blues Brothers, I'm going to watch it tonight now again. I haven't seen it in 10 it's years. It's a marvellous film. What a film it but is. You might watch the end of it tonight and watch the actual beauty of the car yeah. pile up at the end. It was probably yeah. the biggest car pile up that ever happened. Yeah, honestly, they haven't seen it since the M50, yeah. man. They, honestly, I do believe they dropped a car from something very high that's as well. That's insane. That is yeah. so choreographed, that yeah. scene. The cars are dancing. like yeah. The cars are dancing, Laura. It's mm. the best musical ever. Like I know they've taken songs. It's not original songs or whatever, yeah. but... It's the best music. I'm so, it's so be- it's brilliant. Like I know. My shout God. outs, Jaxie. Huh? I have shout outs. Oh, go to your shout outs. Yeah, all, yeah. So have I got everything done there now? Are you any news? No. No, I d- <laughs> lately I've been watching a lot of women's sport. Ray, I don't know what's going on. Um, like between the women's world cup, uh, I'm watching a lot of women's golf. Women's golf is unbelievable. Is by the way, particular reason why you're watching it. Shorts. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can only imagine you just sitting there going, "This is great." <laughs> This is great. No, it's not. No, yeah. no, it's not like because um, you know, I'm putting down my own shorts now because I feel victimized. Yeah. The the so I'm watching a lot of women's sport because well, one it's on the women's world cup is on. I thought the uh, fair play to the Irish women going over there. I know they didn't win a game. It yeah. Doesn't matter though because they should be inspired. Here's the thing I'll tell you. You know, controversial Kennedy coming in. If you want more people to watch women's sports, mm-hmm. women need to watch sports. There you go. I've said it. Let that let the air into the room. I don't know what you said. What do you mean? They're not watching it. If you want the peep, they want women's sports to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay, mm. then try and get women to watch us. Right. Boom. There's your set there. Like, should I run for office now or should I live? Well, I don't think girls are into sport. The majority of them. So stop giving out to me then. <laughs> but you're into sport. Why wouldn't you watch the women? So I do watch us. Yeah. You know when all these flutes come out and say, it's not good. They're not getting paid the same as the men. And it's a disgrace. There's only 40,000 people in Crow Park. There's 80,000 there whenever the men are playing. Yeah, yeah. So you should try and get women to watch, because we'll watch us. I watch mm. every woman's sport under the sun, mm. Ray. I watch women's beach volleyball every day. No, I, I don't. I don't. <laughs> I watch. I watch. I watch all the GAA and everything. I was watching the GAA yesterday. Yeah, uh, the open Crow Park. Yeah, I was watching the Camogie last week Jesus. as well. I'll watch anything. You see, because I don't have that prejudice above me. Fair play to me, by the way. I don't watch wow. any of it. Yeah, I do though, because my mother played football for mm. Galway. She won all Ireland's banana down. So I never knew. I'm not saying, this is like me saying, oh, I don't see colour. What I mean is, I never knew that there was... You don't see gender. I, I just thought like, oh, the women's game is on. We'll watch that now. Yeah. I wasn't like fellas going, I'm not watching that because it's shit quality. Like, mm. it, a lot of the sports are really good. If you watch women's tennis, it's great. Women's golf is nearly better than men's golf to watch. Is it? Because they don't hit it as far. So there, there's a problem now in men's golf where they're overpowering the courses. And mm. the, the, the actual intricacies of golf are gone out of it now. Because they're hitting the ball too far. They're just going, I'm just going to boot it as far to the green as I can, even yeah. if go, and then um, get close. Whereas women have to navigate their way around golf courses, the way golf courses were actually built to be played. Meant to be, yeah. They're not driving the ball 350 yards. Yeah. I watched the Women's US Open a couple of weeks ago. I missed the o- the actual British Open was on. Yeah, the Open was on uh, over the weekend. It's unbelievable to watch the skill set that these women have. It's mm. unreal. Then I was watching the Women's JA and all that. And if you think women haven't peaked enough in Mark's mind, right? There was a girl <laughs> playing for Dublin yesterday right. and her name escapes me. I do apologise. That's great. She, ha- she, won- she kicked eight points in the first half, I think. Right. right? One woman in the match. 
And then she celebrated with her seven-week-old child. That's lovely. Seven weeks ago, she had a child. And seven weeks later, I didn't she's get out that reference. winning. Yeah, I, you I actually immediately thought of that in the man terms. Yeah. Where the man was celebrating with the seven-week-old child. Yeah. Isn't that lovely Hadn't now? been through nothing. Hadn't been yeah. through nothing. <laughs> And he's just delighted to have the child she, there. No, she had the baby. She had the baby herself. He didn't have it. You know, wow. Ali's 11 months old. Dick is still giving out. <laughs> <laughs> That's very complimentary to And this that. woman's out there winning all Ireland. You're telling Nicola this, is you? I must say Could you not her, be yeah. like her? No. <laughs> I must say it to stay it here. <laughs> I actually did say it to Nicola. I actually did say that to Nicola earlier today. And Nicola said, I can guarantee you that baby was not cut out of her stomach because she would not be playing football seven That's weeks later. That's fair enough, yeah. I said, well, uh, w- uh, women should support women. Uh, actually, Nicola, I think she's brilliant. Yeah. I think you're an old hag, yeah. right? You're giving out after 11 months. You're still giving out all the time. Yeah. I said, you would not be worried about. You may need somewhere else to live in the next in the coming days. <sighs> I'm actually sweating now myself even thinking about it. All yeah, I'm saying yeah. is, Ray, I'm watching a lot of women's sport lately and I hope this doesn't sound patronising. Genuinely, it's un. Like, I'll just watch any sport when it's on. It doesn't yeah. bother me. I remember when, was it during the last Olympics or the one before, the Irish women's field hockey team were, like, on a runner. Like, yeah. they were flying towards the semi-final. I think they were playing Holland. I watched every puck of the ball out in the, on the field good. hockey. Because I just loved getting behind. It was about that, wasn't it? Yeah, because yeah, it was, yeah. Irish people are great at just getting behind anything. Mm. Like, Sliger Rovers women now have a team, like... Who, like, I can't go to Rovers games for the most part, even. I definitely... But I'm always checking to see. I just see Keela, Keela Scanlon is out for the year. One of their best players, right. Keela, yeah. is out for the rest of the year. She damaged her knee. Right? How many fellas around the place know that, actually, about Sligo Rovers women's team? I didn't know that. I'm always following this shit. How about the Sligo lady plays kind of uh, uh, Nicole Fowley. Yeah. Nicole Fowley, ladies and gentlemen, is a Sligo woman who just captained Connacht. To uh, beat Leinster 18-17 in, in, the inter- rugby. in the rugby interprovincials, And then she came in then. She came into Lily's last night, had her head nice, and we lifted the place out of it. Everyone was wearing the Connacht gear. So she came straight from the game to straight her head Straight from night. the game, straight to the head nice. I was watching Liverpool versus Chelsea, and I see all these people arguing over millions and millions of pounds online. And I realised, why not just go and support Nicole Fowley or yeah. support Keela Scanlon down there who's injured for Sliger Rovers women? Or support Sliger Rovers? David yeah. Cawley had a testimonial on Saturday night. Go down and support that instead, where the millions aren't. So and you'll be a lot more community. Support yo, local. Yo, support shop local. Brendan, you'll be proud of me. <laughs> 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 have you shout outs, Ray, before I we do. Go? We go have on. a couple of things to get through. We, first on. of all, uh, we do the shout outs and then the, the live gig. We have to, uh, yes, to make an absolutely. Yeah. Shout outs are uh, a young gentleman by the name of Jack McDonald. Jack McDonald He is 13 you. years of age And shouldn't be listening to this No no Jack Honestly man I hope you're listening to it One of your phone in in bed yeah, And your parents don't know It's his father uh, Ken that's aware of this He said to give him the shout out Oh but I think Tonto it, is I it? think it's Tonto But does he have to say about Ken What are you doing Letting your son listen to this Ken you're a terrible father man I must say that to you now Ken yeah. actually So if you're listening Ken you no. know, or if Jack, if you're listening to fair play to you for listening, but no, no maybe you don't about, tell the old lad. No, there's a yeah. lot to be said for that now. I'm ringing the ice PCC. Yeah, uh, also uh, Kevin O'Brien Jr., he Kev- gets a shout out. And, uh, another kid, child, and his father probably letting him listen. No, I don't think Kevin's, he was buying a ladder on Facebook uh, Marketplace and apparently the ladder said ML. <laughs> and he thought he had bought a ladder. He said, lovely of your father to, to sell, sell me a ladder. To yeah, sell the ladder. I don't yeah. think my father had sold him a ladder, but it was an ML Jesus. ladder. Yeah, So, uh, and then also we have to give a shout out to uh, Bowie. Oh! Yeah, who's, who's a dog. a dog who can't yeah, listen. Yeah. Who can't listen, but I'm sure uh, his owner, Louise, yes. will, you know, arrange this. Happy birthday, Bowie. Bowie! <laughs> We've done a dog <laughs> birthday <laughs> shout out. <laughs> what have we come to? <laughs> that means happy birthday in dog. In dog, yeah, yeah. In fairness, yeah. There we okay. go, Bowie. I think that's all our shout outs at the moment. We also have to, big announcement of who we got for the live show. You know, you know that you put up the wee sticker? Did you put up the wee sticker? I about did. The, and and most people said, Garen most people Noon. thought it was Garen Noon, yeah, yeah. Who, which is not. We must say that yeah. it is not. Garen will be doing one of them in the future. Yeah, he is. Uh, ever since he put up his Fredo and Curly Worley videos, the most famous man in the whole country now. Yeah, he did a video what you want from Ashford Moser's with it the was big, very with the big personality and <laughs> Nadia, Nadia, <laughs> big personality, big old set of personality. <laughs> I'm getting flustered. He did the video with her where he it was very good. Unbelievable. They were eating the brunch in the car. It's amazing. And he says to her, before you know it's a brunch, he says to her, shut up now and get your mouth through. <laughs> Put that into your mouth. Put that into your mouth. 
Anyway, what a great... So, we, Garen will be doing one. We have been yeah. in touch with him quite a bit over... The, but he's been we've so busy been, doing we've work. we've been very lucky now as a result of Garen not being available. Yeah. We were kind of going, just who will we get now? We're going to have to... And we took a chance. We took a real chance. And, and a guy who was kind of, half a million followers, by yeah, the way. Yeah, we, we've nothing to lose here. We'll send him a message and ask him. And he said, yeah, no And bother. he says, yeah, I'll be there. Eric Roberts. Eric Roberts, ladies and gentlemen. And if you guess you're wondering who... Because he was afraid of this as well. He said, nobody will know who I am. They were like, he's half a million followers. They're all yeah, this one. You look him up on Instagram, you'll yeah. know his jib. Straight away. He, he won the best fucking men I've ever seen. Yeah, well, it's a real worry getting them down so close to the yeah, wedding. Yeah. Nicola, the when Nicola found out, she was like, oh. Yeah, and Laura suggested him. What about Eric Roberts? What's going on here, man? They're going to get fiddled with. Yeah. This is terrible. I think it's we're just being asked now to get good looking men for their sakes. This not is ours. unbelievable. They'd be like, yeah, like who, get your man on. Who's he? Oh, he's a porn star, fella, porn star. Like, yeah. okay, well, he's odd now. Yeah. Eric Roberts is not one of those. He's a mighty, he is a mighty social man. media man. He is. And uh, he yeah. is going to be on our live show on the 7th of September. Those tickets are available on yeah. Ticketmaster.ie. Yeah. If you want to find the link to that Ticketmaster, it's in our Instagram bio, along with, with. 7th September, 8 o'clock, Anderson's Live. The last one was unreal. The t- link is along with Coast to Coast. So Coast to Coast, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to help support MS Ireland and more than that, Shawnee B, who is going to run from Dublin all the way to Galway and kick the wall, you can find that link in our bio as well. Great. You're doing great there. It's just when you do that, I, it comes upon me. And the Patreon? Give the Patreon, ladies and gentlemen, is actually fine at the moment. We're going through the next batch of guys who are supposed to get t-shirts and mugs. Oh yeah, and all. I did see someone shouting, where is my mug? No, no, the t-shirts and mugs are going to be done. Don't be worrying. We send them okay. out in batches to whatever like 10 people sign up. We go, okay, we better send them out to them now as well. So you're going to get an email. Uh, anyone who signed up recently, you're going to get an email and we're going to send you out lovely merchandise. You can still go on to us, patreon.com forward slash the Kendi and Raybo podcast. And if Wild Youth would like to come on next week. You're more than welcome. Wild Youth, come out, come out and face come the out people. And face the people. Come out and face us. We'll do it. Tell all no, you know, enter expose here, it here from the back. We'd be like show. Oprah sitting down with, with Prince Charles or whatever his name is, Prince Harry. Yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah that's what Oprah sounds like. Yeah, there you go. That's a raise, that's a raise impression of Oprah. <laughs> you know, it's my impression. That's what that's what you know, when Irish people are listening to you telling a story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 go away. Yeah, my mother always yeah. finishes by going, Anyway, yeah. anyway, nah, <laughs> must go. Sure, look at, that's it. <laughs> Sure, look at that's it. <laughs> sure, look at that's yeah. it. Whatever that means. Yeah, two hundred thirteen. Fair play to Brendan Tierney. Flicking the keys. Flicking the keys. Clean off himself with his big yeah. government uh, council job. Yeah. And Ray, fair play to me as well. And fair play to me too. Good luck. Good luck. The Kendi and Raybo podcast, sponsored by Anderson's Tremendous Event Centre and Wonderful Food Items, and Maeve's Cozy Front Lounge.